Hello, I am Luke Loewer, a PhD student at the University of Toronto, supervised by Professor Jacob Swabek. I present our paper, Large Neighborhood Beam Search for Domain Independent Dynamic Programming. In this paper, we propose a new state space search algorithm for combinator optimization combining large neighborhood search and beam search. Let me first introduce the background of this work. This work is based on Domain Independent Dynamic Programming, DIDP. DIDP is a CP-like model answer paradigm for combinator optimization based on dynamic programming, DP. In DIDP, a user formulates a program as a declarative state-based dynamic programming, DP model. Then, a user serves the model using a general purpose DP server. The current DIDP servers are based on state space search. Here, I show a sample program code of DIDP. I do not explain it in details, but the important point is that a user can formulate a DP model using a Python interface and then serve it by calling a general purpose server. As a running example of combinator optimization, I use a TSP-like routing program. In this program, a vehicle starts from the depot and visits all customers. For simplicity, we do not consider returning to the depot. Visiting customer J from customer I requires travel cost CIJ. The objective is to minimize the total travel cost. This program can be solved by DP. The idea of DP is to decompose the original program into sub-programs. In our example, the original program, the beaker is at the depot and all customers except for the depot are unvisited. We decompose this original problem into sub-problems by visiting one of the unvisited customers. By computing the cost of these sub-problems, we can compute the cost of the original problem. To compute the cost of each sub-problem, we need to further decompose it into sub-problems by visiting one more customer. We repeat this procedure until reaching a trivial sub-problem we are all customers are visited. Such as a program has a cost of zero. We can compute the cost of other subprograms based on cost of the trivial subprograms. Formally, a DP model defined by a value function V, which maps a state or subprogram to its cost. In our example, a state is defined by two variables, U and I. U represents the set of unvisited customers. I represents the current customer. In the original program, U is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4 because all customers except for the that differ are unvisited. I is equal to 0 because the location of the vehicle is a deeper. This state is called the target state. The objective of the DP model is to compute the cost of the target state, which corresponds to the cost of the original program. To compute the cost of state UI, we need to decompose it into subprograms by visiting one customer. If we visit customer J from customer I, then the cost becomes CIJ, the travel cost from I to J, plus the cost of the next state. In the next state, customer J is visited, so J is removed from U, and the current customer I is updated to J. This is called a state transition, so we transition from one state to another state by visiting one customer. To compute the optimal cost of state UI, we take the minimum over all customer J included in the set of ambitious customer U. When all customers are visited, then the cost of the state is defined non-recursively to be zero. This is called a base case. 
by solving this recursive equation, we can compute the value function v. In DADP, in addition to the definition of the value function, a user can incorporate a dual bound function h into a model. A dual bound function returns a lower bound on the optimal cost for the minimization. The dual bound function is unnecessary to define a model, but a solver may benefit from it. This is an important feature of DIDP. The DP model is solved as a shortest path problem in a state space graph. In a state space graph, nodes are states and edges are transitions. In our example, one transition corresponds to visiting one customer from the current customer. Therefore, an edge connects a state to another state where one customer is visited in addition. The weight of the edge is the travel time from the current customer I to the next customer J. The cost of state S corresponds to the shortest path cost from state S to our base case. The optimal cost of the problem corresponds to the shortest path cost from the target state to our base case. One important point is that this state space graph is a graph. It is possible that multiple paths lead to the same state. It is possible that during the search, we encounter the same state multiple times. To avoid repeated computation, a state space search algorithm typically stores already searched states in memory. Whenever it encounters a state, it checks if the state is already searched or not. If the state is already searched, we may skip it. So this is an important point of the state space search algorithm compared to tree search in CP. To find the shortest path in a state space graph, the current DIDP servers use heuristic search. A heuristic search algorithm keeps track of the G value of state S, the S, which is a pass cost from the target state to state S. In addition, a heuristic search algorithm uses a heuristic function, H, which estimates the shortest path cost from state S to a base case. In the case of DIDP, we can use the dual bound function defined in a DP model as a heuristic function. In addition, a heuristic search algorithm typically uses the F value, Fs, which is a sum of the G value and H value. The F value represents a lower bound on the shortest path cost from the target state to a base case via state S. Therefore, we expect that if the F value is smaller, a state is more likely to lead to a better solution. Now, I introduce one heuristic search algorithm, beam search. Beam search keeps the best B state, minimizing the F values in each layer of the state space search. B is called beam values. Suppose that B equal 2 in our example. I give the F value of each state. Suppose that the F value of the target state is 10. Beam search first expands the target state. Then we have four states with different F values. Beam search expands the best two states according to the F values among these four states. Again, Beam search generates successor state of the expanded state, and now we have six states with different F values. Beam search expands the best two states. Repeating this procedure, beam search eventually finds a solution. 
In this example, fortunately, we can find a solution with Beam Search, but in general, there is no guarantee that Beam Search can find a solution. A state of the art DIDP server uses complete anytime Beam Search, GIBS. GIBS repeats Beam Search with exponentially increasing Beam values B. CABS repeats this procedure until exhausting the state space. CABS prunes a state S if its F value is greater than or equal to the solution cost. This doesn't lose the optimality. Suppose that B, equals easy, B is equal to 4 and the current solution cost is 14. In this example, CABS expands the target state, generates four successor state, but prunes two of them based on the bounds. Then CABS generates six successor states, but prunes five of them using the bounds. In the final layer, CABS generates two states, but both of these states are pruned by the bound. Therefore, CABS exhausts all states. In such a case, CABS proves that the current solution is an optimal solution. In this way, CABS is guaranteed to prove the optimal solution if it exists. Now, I talk about our idea, Large Neighborhood Beam Search. Large Neighborhood Search, LNS, is an algorithmic framework to improve a solution by removing a part of the solution and search for a better solution. In CP, a solution corresponds to value assignment to decision variables. LNS for CP typically removes value assignment to some decision variables and performs research to find a better solution. In DIDP, a solution corresponds to a path in a state space. Therefore, LNS for DIDP removes a partial path from a solution path and then performs state space search to find a better partial path. Now, I show an overview of our algorithm, Large Neighborhood Beam Search, LNBS. LNBS first finds an initial feasible solution path. Then LNBS removes a partial path from the solution path and search for a better partial path using beam search. More concretely, LNBS first selects the length of the partial path you remove, D. Then LNBS selects the starting point of the partial path, I. After deciding D and I, LNBS selects beam values B and performs beam search to improve a solution. LNBS repeats this procedure until reaching the time limit. In this diagram, D is equal to 2, so the length of the partial path to remove is 2. I equals to 2, so the partial path starts from the second state. Okay, so how to select the length of the partial path to remove? If the length is too large, the partial state space becomes very large. So we may find a better solution in this partial state space, but it is time consuming. If the length is too small, searching this state space is very cheap, but we may not find a better solution. Therefore, the, length of the selection of the length has trade off between computation time and solution quality. Intuitively, we want to use the length which maximizes the cost improvement per time. We formulate this problem as a merge out bounded problem with continuous random cost. In this problem, if we use length d, then we improve the cost by Rd and consume computational time Td. Rd and Td are random variables. We need to estimate these variables on the way. The, uh, 
we repeatedly select length d and observe cost improvement rd and time td. The objective is to maximize cumulative cost improvement within the time limit. We use the budgeted UCB algorithm proposed in the literature to optimize this problem. Once we decide the length of the partial bus to remove D, we randomly sample the starting point of partial bus with uniform probabilities. For each length D and start I, we maintain BLS BDI. BDI is initialized to B1. After each beam search with D and I, we double BDI. So this strategy is similar to CABS. In LNBS, we have multiple neighborhoods with different D. Suppose that we use D equal to 4 and I equal to 1. In this example, this corresponds to the entire state space. After beam search, we double BDI for D equal to 4 and I equal to 1. However, for neighborhoods with D equal to 2, we reset serial beam values to 1. This is because a solution is updated, so the partial set space are changed for these neighborhoods. In contrast, for D equal to 4, even when a new solution is found, the state space is not changed. The entire state space is never changed, so the beam values for the entire state space keeps increasing. Eventually, the beam values for the entire such space becomes large enough to exhaust the such space. In such a case, LNBS can prove the optimality of the current solution. Now, I show the experimental evaluation result. We evaluate the solution quality achieved by LNBS and CABS within the time limit. We use the primary gap, the relative gap to the best known solution cost. Smaller is better. We also evaluated MIP and CP using state-of-the-art MIP and CP model in the literature using commercial solvers, Globi and CP optimizer. In this plot, x-axis is the primary gap and y-axis the ratio of instances. If x is 0.1 and y is 0.9, it means that in 90% of instances, the primary gap of 0.1 or better is achieved, so left and higher is better. In routing problems such as TSP with time windows, TSP TW, and peak and delivery TSP, MPD TSP, CABS outperforms MIP and CP, and LNBS is better than CABS. In these problems, LNBS show improvement over CABS. Now I present the results in scheduling problems. In the single machine total weighted tardiness problem, LNBS is better than CABS, but CP is the best. In talent scheduling, CP is better than CABS, but LNBS is better than CABS and CP. So this is a large improvement. However, in other programs such as simple assembly line balancing and minimization of open stacks, CABS is better. Why? We hypothesize that the performance of LNBS is related to the diversity of partial pass costs in a partial state space. LNBS tries to improve the solution by searching a partial state space. Therefore, if the partial pass costs in a partial state space are diverse, then it may be easier for LNBS to find a better solution. However, the diversity is small, it may be difficult to find a better solution. This is the intuition. 
we experimentally validated this intuition. To measure the diversity of partial pass costs, we use entropy. We don't present the definition of entropy in this presentation. However, when the entropy is high, the partial pass costs are diverse. Also, we use the solution length as the measure of the problem difficulty. When a solution length is large, the problem is also large, so the problem should be more difficult. In these plots in the slide, blue points represent problem instances where LNPS achieves better solution quality than CIPS. Black point represents problem instances where LNPS and CIPS are the same. Orange points represent problem instances where CIPS is better. In routing and scheduling problems, cost entropy tend to be high. When cost entropy and solution lengths are large, LNBS tends to outperform CABS. However, in other problems, cost entropy tends to be small. When solution length becomes larger, LNBS is outperformed by CABS. This experimental result indicates that the performance of LNBS is related to the diversity of partial pass cost. In summary, this paper is about DIDP, a new model answer based paradigm for combinator optimization. We propose large neighborhood beam search, LNBS, which combines large neighborhood search and beam search. LNBS outperforms CABS in routing and scheduling programs. However, the performance of LNBS seems to be related to the diversity of partial passcodes. You can easily start using DIDP with Python. You can install our library with PIP install DIDP Py. On the website, we have tutorials and API reference. If you are interested, please use DIDP. Thank you for listening.